Welcome back, Warriors. My name is Kita, and tonight I bring to you another truth spitting episode of Psychopath Exposure. What's up, fam? Tonight I want to talk about why codependency and codependent people are the food for psychopath narcissists. That's right, food for these vampires. The codependent person is probably one of the easiest victims that a psychopath narcissist can manipulate and terrorize altogether. You've heard the buzzword probably for years now, codependent, codependency. I believe I was in high school the first time I heard a girl tell me that she was codependent and I had absolutely no idea what the heck that was all about. I thought codependent, maybe she's dependent on somebody cooperatively, some cooperative dependency. I didn't know what the heck she was talking about. It just went right over my head. But years later, ooh, ooh, that word, that word came to haunt me. Boy, I've met a lot of codependent people in my life and sadly to say, I have been codependent and many times of my life too, and I'm sure you have too. In my experience, I've discovered that uh, a lot of, uh, not, not just victims of narcissistic abuse, but just people in toxic relationships altogether, um, they have a lot of codependency traits, and that's why they attract these toxic uh, predators into their life. Um, so I wanted to dive deep and give you guys a little, a little insights on why codependents are food for psychopath narcissists and for toxic people. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read off an article I just pulled up on Google real quick um, to give you guys a little more insight before I go into my usual rants. Um, so codependency is a focus on other people's problems, other people's feelings, needs, and wants while minimizing or ignoring your own. Codependency other people as more important than themselves and prioritize taking care of them in order to feel needed, loved, or worthwhile. While we all need and rely on other people, codependents are overly dependent on others emotionally. They need others to tell them that their feelings and needs are valid, that their opinions are acceptable, and that they're good enough. Let me repeat that, that they are good enough. They rely on others for their own identity, and self-worth and you know what that really stings because I personally know some people that have really really strong codependency issues and because of that they've attracted into their life really really um, toxic individuals not just psychopaths but just toxic people altogether and, and you know when you're a codependent you you it's like your sense of pur purpose relies on fixing other people. Like other people become your projects. So fixing, helping, or rescuing someone else becomes your world. And you put your own needs aside. You lose all sense of what's important to you. Not only that, but you'll ruin a perfectly solid relationship Right? You'll ruin a solid relationship if you get intertwined with someone else who is obviously going through a difficult time and instead of letting them hit rock bottom, you're going to go ahead and take on their problems as if they're yours. Um, I'll give you an example. is, is, is a drug addiction. Um, you know, there's people that, that get into toxic relationships with drug addicts or alcoholics. And um, you see what happens. They, they, be, they start enabling these people. They start enabling, meaning they make it easier for them to continue using because they're there to catch them when they fall. Instead of letting them hit a rock bottom and allow them to fuck up their life completely so that they on their own could realize that they need help and do what they need to do as an individual to get healthy, the codependent will be there to catch them, to bring them food, to take care of them, to listen to them. Meanwhile, the addict is just taking advantage of that because that's what they do, okay? If an addict is not seeking the proper care and the proper health from 
like a 12 step recovery, which in my experience is one of the only things that really, really works. Um, that's my experience. You can argue with me all you want, but um, 12 step recovery is something that I highly advocate. Um, I've, I've seen people change um, and just find a, a true connection to a higher power that can actually guide them through through their addiction and, and, and make changes. Otherwise, if you're forcing someone into rehab or to get therapy or something like that and, and they're not there by their own will, it just doesn't work out. That's my experience, but um, that's what I do. I just tell you about my experiences. Um, but back to the codependency, um, you know, a lot of people that, that are dealing with addicts are codependent and they you see how they fall apart, like their life turns into shambles. They don't take care of themselves. They put others first and they just gravitate to people that they feel that they can rescue because in rescuing someone else, they feel a sense of self-worth. But truthfully, they have shit self-esteem, just shit self-esteem, okay? And um, they never focus on their own needs until one day they just have a panic attack and just fall apart and they have no idea why. And it's because they're so preoccupied with fixing the other person that they didn't even realize how broken they were. And these broken people, because they are broken, they're damaged, they will, ruin, they will ruin good relationships with good people. They will self-sabotage good relationships. So having said that, and I can, I can go on, I can go on about this and I will, but having said that, okay, can you imagine what a predator, what a narcissist, what a psychopath will do if they can get their hands on a codependent? I mean, the narcissist is known to manipulate their victims. A narcissist is known to gaslight and torture and create a false self and a false image to get their victims addicted to this false self, almost like a drug, and extract narcissistic supply from them and then flip the script, just flip the script when they know that their victim is addicted and super attached to them and start devaluing them and just hurting them purposely while just behind their back doing the same thing to a new supply, to a new victim. Highly manipulative, toxic people take advantage of codependence. And who do we have at the top of the scale at, at highly manipulative? The fucking psychopath. The narcissist, the sociopath, people with borderline personality disorders. So if you're a codependent, if you're listening to this, if this is hitting home, I highly recommend reading this book called Codependent No More. It's by Melody Beatty. Um, really good book. It's been around for a long time. It's not a new age book. It's been around for a while. And I, I'm pretty sure you'll resonate with everything that that book has to offer. But yeah, um, it's so easy for the narcissist to take advantage of the codependent. It's so, it's so easy. And the worst part is that once, once you're hooked, once you're hooked, it's even harder for the codependent to let go. Even after they've been discarded, even after they've been discarded by the narcissist, the codependent just can't seem to grasp the idea of living without this toxic person in their life. They feel better staying in a marriage or, or in a relationship with a narcissist that's going to continue devaluing them, that's going to continue making them feel like utter shit, that's not going to give them any intimacy, it's not going to give them any type of romance, it's not going to give them any sense of safety or trust, no adventure, no, no fun. Just rob them of all of their life source. Just make them feel like they're never, ever good enough. And they're going to continue that cycle. And they know that that cycle is going to continue. They already know. They've already watched the videos. They've already, maybe they've seen therapists. They already know and they just can't seem to break the cycle. Because as a codependent, you need to be fixing someone else. You need someone in your life that you feel you're rescuing or that you feel you're, you're devoted to. And the more that person tells you you're not good enough, the more you try, the more you double down to prove to them that you are good enough, only to be rejected at the end and to apologize, apologize 
and apologize non-stop is like a forever apology it's the opposite of the narcissist the narcissist will never apologize to you the narcissist will never take responsibility for the for the damage that they do to their victims ever or or for anything really they'll never they'll never accept responsibility they'll never apologize and never say they're sorry and if they do it's tongue in cheek and you know it and you can feel it but the codependent doesn't stop apologizing they apologize and they don't have to it's it's annoying it's actually annoying sometimes and you know what happens um, obviously not everybody that that you're gonna date is a narcissist no matter what you believe after going through this situation not everybody is a narcissist you may think that they are because you're a little hyper vigilant but narcissists are only like two to four percent of the population chances are you're not gonna date another narcissist um, could happen but the odds are very low um, but you might attract a toxic person. You might attract someone with some sort of trauma. You might attract an addict. You might attract another toxic person because you're so used to being involved with toxic people that that's what you gravitate to. Okay? But let's say you attract someone that's on the very low, low end scale of narcissism or low, low scale of toxicity. You know? Um, it's just human nature to take advantage of situations when they come easy. If someone leaves $10,000 in cash in front of you on a table and you know you shouldn't take it, you know you shouldn't take it because it belongs to somebody. It was probably stolen. It's probably a trap. It's probably a trap for you to take it and then the cops come and they bust you. It's like, hey, what are you doing? You right? Um, but you, you, you're going to try and take it. You're going you're gonna to grab something. It's just human nature. I mean, it's very easy. So even a healthy or semi-healthy person, if they're dating a codependent and the codependent just does not let them do anything for themselves. They want to rescue them. They want to take care of them. They want to fix them. They want to do all this shit. Eventually, it's like, okay, you know, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. And the codependent doesn't know how to say no. And they'll just take on all this shit. And you, you see it in their stress levels. You see it in, in their anxiety. They have all this unnecessary stress and anxiety in their life. And it's like, let the shit go. Let the shit go. But that's... That's codependency for you. It's toxic in itself. So I wanted to make a video because, it's a, and I'll probably make another video. Why not? Um, because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to codependency. Because the, there's two sides of the story. I mean, I'm, we're talking about narcissi a narcissist and a codependent. But um, don't think, do not doubt that a codependent is toxic. A codependent is a toxic person to, to someone that's healthier than them. Someone that's going that's going somewhere in life and, and they start dating a codependent, um, it's, it, 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 it's tough, you know? It's tough because you want to you date someone that, that, that you can rely on. You want to date on someone that has you know, a high, high self-esteem, someone that, that has confidence. And, and if you're stuck with someone that's, they're basically depending on, on fixing you or fixing something for them to feel some sort of self-worth, but they're not getting that self-worth from themselves, eventually they're probably going to cheat on you. They're going to like gravitate to some other piece of shit dumbass that's going through some, you know, some toxic shit, and they're going to gravitate towards that. And then that's the low-hanging fruit that I talk about, that I tell you guys all the time. It's like, why did the narcissist, you know, start dating a low-hanging fruit type of thing? Well, you know what? Why did the codependent, right? right? Why did the codependent start dating a low-hanging fruit um, piece of crap after, you know, it's the same thing. It's toxicity. Okay. It's toxicity. That's the problem. There's a lot of, a lot of broken people. Um, they've been through a lot of traumatic experiences and sometimes that toxicity eventually gravitates towards narcissism, but sometimes it doesn't, but that doesn't mean that, 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 that person's healthy just because you're not a narcissist doesn't really mean that you're, um, you've got it all together. There's all sorts of disorders. There's all sorts of disorders. So if you stumbled upon this video um, through maybe a YouTube, YouTube suggestion or, or something of, of the other and, and you're still watching, I hope you got something out of it because um, there's a lot of red flags in, in many, 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 many types of disorders. And sometimes those red flags overlap. Okay, Sometimes they overlap. And it's important to understand how, how vast um, toxic people range in the scale of, of toxicity um, so you can understand what you're dealing with, who you're dealing with, how to cope with it. Um, and take a look at what type of boundaries you're setting. 
Okay, what type of boundaries are you setting for yourself to allow such people in your life to watch these people fall apart and all of a sudden, you know, if you have codependency traits, for you to have that awareness to be like, holy shit, like I should be focused on my business right now or I should be focused on, on, on taking care of this matter, right? I should be focusing on my health, but instead I'm worried about what my partner might be feeling, might be feeling. I wonder if they're mad. I wonder if they're thinking of this. I wonder, can I do something to, keep, to make sure that they're happy? How about focusing on yourself? What do you got to do to make yourself happy? You know? So just some food for thoughts. And yeah, codependents are food for narcissists. So uh, if you're a codependent, um, I highly recommend doing some work on yourself. Highly recommend doing some work on yourself. I can help you guys um, get all these things sorted out in your head. I know, it's, I know it's a lot of information. It's a lot of trauma. It's a lot of triggers. But I work with a lot of people on narcissistic abuse. So if you want to work directly with me, just go ahead and click on the link in the description to get more details on how you can schedule a private one-on-one -on -one coaching mentoring session with me. And uh, if you haven't already picked up my free ebook, go ahead and do that now. It's called The Five Steps of Going No Contact with a Psychopath Narcissist. And that way you'll learn how to start setting boundaries and keeping these people away from your life by going no contact with them, no social media, no phone calls, no texts. It goes into details, a 22-page book, so you can go ahead and download that also in the link on the description and you can get that straight to your phone or your computer. Um, I know this was a long video and a long rant. Believe me, I wanted this one to be short, but there's just so much to say on this topic. I'm definitely going to make more videos on it in a, in a more cohesive manner. But I, um, I didn't want to wait until then. I think it's important to get this information out as soon as it comes to me. So hopefully it was helpful, guys. If you liked the video, make sure to drop a like. Subscribe. Click on the little bell icon to make sure you get notified every time I drop one of these powerhouses. And also, please, um, if you have any questions or if you want to share your experiences in the comments below with the rest of the community, please continue doing that. I see a lot of people helping each other, and it's fantastic. I know some of you guys have already exchanged contact information and you guys are talking amongst each other and being there as a support group i love it so please continue doing that and again if you want to work with me just shoot me an email at info at psychopathexposure.com or click the links below in the description to get more details on how you can work with me hope you have a great rest of your evening and i'll talk to you guys in the next video